Metal Gear Solid 3 has been re-released, remastered, and essentially remade before. The original Snake Eater looked like this, with the same fixed camera angles as 1 and 2, but it wasn't until Subsistence that they massively overhauled everything with a third-person camera. Now, you still moved around just like the original, but the new view was a complete game-changer for stealth and immersion. But they actually did go one step further with another release. It was weird when EA brought Mass Effect 3 to Wii U while a trilogy was coming to other platforms and something very similar happened with Metal Gear. In 2011, they released the Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, a revamped lineup of Metal Gear 1, 2, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, and a dual stick revamped Peace Walker. It absolutely rocked, and the following year, it would also come to the PlayStation Vita, without Peace Walker for some reason, but allowing portable versions of Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 with next to no compromises. How flippin' cool! This came out three months before the Vita version. It's just three. It was the same price. Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D. This is a fascinating ass game. On paper, it's one of the worst deals you could possibly get. A standalone release competing with a collection featuring that standalone release. But Snake Eater 3D isn't just the same Metal Gear Solid 3. It still plays out the same, with the same story, same animation, same voices, the same identity for the most part, but the core is extremely different. Actually, I say the same voices, but some of them did reprise their roles for 3DS-specific prompts, which is kinda nuts. The weapons you're currently holding will be displayed on the touchscreen. Hey, that's Yoshi! Huh? Right there! See it? Where? Right in front of you. This doll? That's Yoshi! Don't tell me you've never heard of him. Oh, okay. But what's this thing doing here? Yoshi. What? He's called Yoshi. Right, so what's this doing here? He must be getting popular in the Soviet Union. Anyway, the game is pretty much the same, but the core is borrowed almost entirely from Peace Walker. This means gameplay evolutions you saw in Metal Gear Solid 4 and Peace Walker have retroactively been added to three, the biggest of which come from movement. In the original game, Snake wasn't so good at running and shooting. This actually works a little bit better with the fixed angles of the vanilla Snake Eater. From there you can more easily sort of position yourself to where you're pointing, whereas in the third person view you're just kind of spraying blindly. Of course, first person is much more precise, but you sacrifice movement for that precision because Snake comes to a complete halt. However, in 3D, not only can Snake move while in first person just like you can in Metal Gear Solid 4, but you can toggle between that, the original shoot directly in front of you third person approach, and the real game changer, Peace Walker's third person precision aiming. Even the UI for hitting shots is straight out of Peace Walker. One concern you may have is I bet the controls come from Peace Walker too, and by default, yeah, they do. This is another game where the face buttons control the camera, which you can get used to, but it's never exactly ideal. But that's where this baby comes in, the Circle Pad Pro. This completely evolved games like Resident Evil Revelations and Metal Gear Solid 3D, giving the 3DS full dual analog support, and with this, I strongly believe this is the best playing version of MGS3. You can play like this using a new 3DS too, but the nub doesn't really feel anywhere near as good as this bulky thing, but still an improvement over the face buttons. Moving doesn't just stop at shooting either. In the original game you had three stages of stances. You can run around, crouch, or crawl. But when crouching you can't actually move, any direction just brings you to a crawl. So if you're going to be sneaky, chances are you'll spend a lot of time crawling around the jungle. And of course, given we're mechanically building off Peace Walker, moving while crouching has found its way into the 3DS version, and it's a massive change to the pacing of the game. You obviously still have much more visibility than if you were crawling around, but there's tons of areas where this comes in handy. They also make things a bit cleaner, by freeing the top screen of the HUD entirely and placing it on the bottom one. You get quick access to menus, you can easily sort through items, it's pretty rad. There's even a really cool 3DS specific feature where you make your own camo by taking a picture of something in the real world. This is my Pikachu camo. They'll never find me. You may have also noticed, this looks quite a bit different to the PS2 version, in some ways worse, in some ways better. 
Snake's model is actually largely better, with more polygons in the face and new material effects, but most characters don't look quite as good as Snake. They've swapped some models around, redone a bunch of the textures, and have mostly just made a different looking version of MGS3. Not always worse, not always better. But I've been hiding a pretty big con of the 3DS version. It runs like this. Like all the time. All the footage I've been showing you before this comes from a 60fps code that forces the game to run at a higher frame rate. The catch is this doesn't really work on the actual system. Even when overclocking the system to run a new 3DS clock speed, it doesn't really work. So the only way to achieve 60fps MGS 3D is to use the Citra emulator, and this game crashes a lot on the emulator. It is really nice to experience the best playing version of this game in fantastic clarity with great performance, but it really can't be done for an entire playthrough. It can barely be done for 20 minutes, it just isn't stable enough. Which means the honest Metal Gear Solid 3D experience is this. What you're seeing here is raw 3DS capture. This game runs at a locked frame rate of 20 FPS. This is to say, it can never get higher than 20 FPS. Even if the system's got the resources to shoot for 24 FPS, it simply will not do that. And oh boy, it does get lower than 20 FPS, especially in cutscenes. This is a 20 FPS and under experience, making it pretty ugly to play. But honestly, the 3D effect is good. They've added some materials that float around the jungle, getting carried around by the wind, and they pop out and add layers of depth to the whole jungle. It looks outstanding with the added dimension. It just makes things run even worse than they already do. They made massive changes to how Metal Gear Solid 3 controls and overhauled the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in a really great way. They even added Yoshis! But it performs very, very poorly. I don't think you can call this the definitive version. If the emulated version was stable, then absolutely, that is the best way to play Metal Gear Solid 3. But it's a crashy, washy little thing. Also, people always say this game loses the stereoscopic 3D effect when Snake loses his eye, and I'm pretty sure that's not true. Some guns always disable the 3D effect regardless of your eye patch, like from the beginning of the game. But like, here's Snake in first person with the eye patch, and it's 3D. Maybe it was just such a cool idea that we chose to believe it, but I'm pretty sure this isn't true. With a full-on remake on the horizon, I can only hope it delivers on what Metal Gear Solid 3D tried to do in the first place. If we can get a new version of MGS3 that builds upon mechanics introduced later in the series and runs at a frame rate above 20 FPS, then boy oh boy, we're in for a good time. Imagine if Metal Gear Online comes back too! Man! And Snake vs Monkey! Bring back Snake vs Monkey!